Today on eTalk, we learn all about the new Instagram algorithm, explore natural skincare products, and unpack all of the TikTok and celebrity gossip. All that and more coming up. Talkers, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of eTalk. I'm Cami here with Taylor, and we're so excited for this week's episode. Let's jump right into the hottest gossip of the week. So Demi Lovato's recent ex-fiance, Matt Eimrich, she just came out saying that she actually had a lot of um, realization after her breakup with um, Matt that she actually is a part of the queer community and she told the world she didn't specify which part but she was just happy to come out and say listen I had a realization this is who I am I'm not ready to share it with the world but I just want to let you know and I think it's amazing because she's not playing by the quote-unquote rules that I feel like a lot of celebrities play with and they feel like they have to release things in a certain way or play with the media. And I just, I love how she's just saying, I will, I'll say it when I'm ready and I'm not ready right now. So I'm really proud of Demi Lovato. Keep it going. I think I need to learn from her. I'm so proud of her because she has clearly been through so much. I mean, as a child star, you know, you kind of go through all of that. You're in the public eye and we learned so much about her in her simply complicated um, YouTube film, yes. and now she has Dancing with the Devil, which is coming out very soon. I'm so excited to see that, and I think she's really grown since her overdose. Mm-hmm. Um, that was such a pivotal time in her life, and for that to just kind of be the culmination of, you know what, I really need help, I really need to get my life yeah. together, that is so important that she had that realization. But I want to talk about her BFF, her Disney BFF, when they were younger. <laughs> yes. She met Selena Gomez on set of Barney and Friends when she uh-huh. was just seven years old. I love Selena Gomez. She's amazing. But I'm a little bit upset because she's thinking about quitting music full time, which I absolutely have been listening to her music since she was with Selena Gomez in the scene um, back when she was on Disney Channel on Wizards of Waverly Place. And now she's saying, you know, I'm not really sure if music is really my thing because I put out Lose You to Love Me, which is my favorite you know, song I've ever put out. I feel like it was my best work. And at the same time, there were so many critics of the song. Mm-hmm. And they just constantly keep tearing her down, saying it's not good enough. Um, and she really just wants to give herself a fair shot at acting. Um, she's done a few things after Wizards of Waverly Play. She did Monte Carlo, Ramona and Beezus, Spring Breakers. She also is filming a show right now with Steve Martin. It's called Only Murders in the Building. It was shot on the Upper West Side of New York. So she has a lot of acting projects um, coming up, but I think everything that she's been through with her kidney transplant, her on and off relationship with Justin Bieber for eight years, she definitely has a lot to say in her music. Yeah. And I want her to have that chance. Yeah, yeah, and I just, I love Selena and I think we can learn so much from her and just her perseverance is amazing and admirable but and I'm so sad that she might leave music but at least we get her with the acting because I love her acting we also grew up with her so exactly. we're like we don't want her to leave right but I understand that she's also coming out with a food um show kind yes, of a food on HBO. series so she's really doing a lot for herself but I hope I don't know if you could just quit music, maybe take a little break, then come back. We right. love like we love Selena, but I really think she's definitely using her platform for a great way and to inspire others. And right. her music inspires us too. I agree too. So I don't want to lose she that. She got her past three albums that were on her own, you know, without Selena yeah. Gomez in the scene, all hit number one on the Billboard charts. Right. So she's definitely been very successful. Yeah. It's just You know, there are so many people that constantly try to tear her down. And it's so unfortunate because she does have so much talent to share with the world. So many stories. I mean, she's in her late 20s. I know. She's probably lived like 50 (laughs) lives with people so far. You know, she has done so much. So I really admire her too. I think that she just has 
so much going for her and I think her presence in the media is something that we need. She's a positive exactly. person. And I think we all can take a lesson from this and whoever is watching this just to be kind and yes. understand people's music and their life and their platforms that they have. And I think if we can just all be kind and just be happy human beings and not criticize people and you, sp you see it everywhere, people it criticizing is. others. So if Selena's saying this, let's take a hint and let's start being kind to right. others, but I mean like, <laughs> not us, but just everyone. The whole world, The whole sure. world. <laughs> Next up, we, ha we walk through the transition into spring clothing, don't go anywhere. Hey eTalkers, it's Simone, welcome back to Style Corner, and today we're gonna be doing some trend forecasting for spring, summer 2021. First up, we have flared leggings, or you know, good old yoga pants, they've definitely made a comeback, and they're so comfy and perfect for running around campus. I have mine paired with this bone colored t-shirt, which I feel like bone is definitely really big this season. It was big in the winter, as like a winter white, and I definitely think it's super wearable for the spring. I have on a yoga headband, which is like really popping off on all the little Instagram vloggers, um, and I think it's like a really fun, simple way to do your hair differently, something new other than just claw clips. Then we have some pearl um, jewelry paired with gold. Gold has obviously been like such a staple for everyone these past few seasons and pearls are definitely um, gonna be a go-to with that for the spring and summer. So another huge trend for this spring and summer is transitioning your leather pieces that were huge this fall and winter into more summery styles. Here I have a leather jacket with denim shorts and that same bone colored t-shirt and another way you could dress this up too to like fall in line with more of your winter pieces is to go get yourself some calf high booties or knee high booties and pair it with the leather jacket and you're good to go. Let us know on our Instagram what you think are some of the biggest trends for the spring and summer. Next up we're going to be talking about all things bachelor. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Welcome back, I'm Taylor here with Cami, and we are going to be discussing Bachelor Nation. So Cami, I don't know about you, but I have been watching Bachelor Nation <laughs> probably since I was eight, I'm not even gonna lie. Oh. I would see my mom watching it and I would just go into the room and just see, you know, what's going on in this? Why is there so much drama in the show? But I do have to say I have a lot of favorites. Mm -hmm. um, I would say my favorite couple to date is Sean and Catherine Lowe. I adore them. They were on the 17th season of The Bachelor uh -huh. and they are just the cutest couple. They have three kids and they got married in 2014 and they've been together ever since. They're one of the really, really successful yes. um, couples in Bachelor Nation that has really survived, you know, with social media and everything. And Catherine was in an interview and she actually said, you know, I think what's really helped our relationship is staying out of the public eye. Yeah. Because a lot of people, when they do do Bachelor Nation, they say, you know, I want to get opportunities out of this, right, be an right. influencer, yeah. whatever. And she just thinks that, you know, she owes a lot of her healthy relationship to just kind of being with her husband yeah. and her kids. She made the move from Seattle to Dallas, which is Aww. where he's from. So she sacrificed a lot. And she even talked about Claire and Dale mm -hmm. and how they've had some pretty hard times together i know um, uh, so she said you know they really haven't compromised on where they're going to live and that's yeah. the biggest thing you need to decide when right. you're going to you know go into the real world after yeah. the bachelor so 
They are my favorite couple, I have to say. Yeah, I definitely agree. And this topic can be so juicy sometimes when you're talking about The Bachelor, which is so funny. Yes. But I haven't watched every season. I watch bits and pieces of the season, and I feel like I pull out what I need to know. Oh, yes. And I, with social media now, you just know everything. Oh, true. But I want to bring up Tyler Cameron, because even though he, he did not him. end up with Meg and Megan, right? Hannah, Hannah, Hannah Brown. Oh, why am I thinking that? <laughs> I knew it was Hannah. Meghan Markle's in the news right now, that's why. <laughs> but, so, with Hannah, I totally know who she is. Anyway, um, he's huge now, and I think he is the person, he so was never a bachelor, like, he just was on Hannah's season, and now he's this huge star, and it's like, how did he become of this? Because he made a life for him, and I feel like he's been with Gigi Hadid. Yes. He's been, but you could see like how these couples aren't always successful, but The Bachelor does do great things for some of these people who really like take take it and roll with it, you know? I agree. I personally really wish that Tyler had ended up with Hannah. You know, Me she too. picked Jed, and unfortunately, he was lying to her the entire time, which some people just go on the show for fame. Yep. Um, Jed just wanted to kickstart his music career, and that clearly did not work out for him. Um, so Hannah spent all of this past year's quarantine with Tyler at his home in Jupiter, Florida, and it seemed like they were getting along well. They were doing a bunch of TikTok trends, and everyone was just happy yeah. in, such a, in such a difficult time. Um, yes. And that's how Hannah actually met Matt James, yeah. um, who is our new Bachelor now. Oh. So honestly, I wish that they had ended up together, but... Um, Hannah's actually with a model right now. She's with Adam <gasps> Woolard. He's oh. really cute, I just have to say. He's super <laughs> cute. But I'm kind of confused, like, what happened with Tyler? Like, why not be with him? I know, I totally agree with that, but I love the friendship. Like, that's True. so cool that, like, we all wanted Tyler and Hannah to be together, but they're best friends now. And their videos during quarantine, I think was, like, helping a lot of us get through this quarantine. Oh, yes. So they did an amazing, positive thing, and, like... The fact that you can end up with somebody but not be like with them in a relationship, maybe but that's as a what friend. they were supposed to be like. You know, yeah. maybe it was meant for them to have a you know yes. lifelong friendship and yeah. always have each other in their lives. No, I totally agree. I but I think it's great that I know. Well, Tyler was with a model. He was with Gigi. So I, I guess they're both doing their there, thing. With there's the too models. much drama to keep up with, oh. honestly. Oh. Next up, Avery will walk us through the new Instagram algorithm. Stay tuned. and the chipmunks want to remind you bacteria can hide in food and make you ill wow but you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps clean i'm waiting for the rinse cycle separate <laughs> cook Fire in the hole. and chill we chipmunks are notoriously tight check your steps the road chip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov <laughs> It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. everyone welcome to social corner i'm avery and today we're going to be discussing the new instagram algorithm so first off the number one factor that the instagram algorithm encompasses is your insta feed isn't only based on who you follow but it's also based on your accounts and the types of posts you like historically so interest the more the algorithm thinks you will like a certain type of post, the higher they'll put it into your feed. So consistently showing up on Instagram is definitely important. Number two is relationship. So Instagram wants to prioritize posts from your friends, family, and they use interactions to piece together who is closest to you. Number three is timeliness, so how long ago the photo was posted. And you could actually hack the algorithm to figure out the best time to post using the Later app. So number four is frequency, how often you post. If you check out the app less often, your feed will be sorted into what Instagram thinks you like instead of chronologically. 
Number five is following. So how many people do you follow? If you follow a lot of people, you probably, hang on, where did the rest of this go? Um, won't see all, <laughs> all posts from every account. Um, and it could be worth removing your ghost followers, which are also called inactive followers. Number six is usage. So if you spend enough time on the app, you can run out of new content to see. And once this happens, the algorithm will serve you suggestions and run new accounts at the top of your feed. So next up, we have stories. So stories that appear at the front of your feed are accounts you engage with the most, whether through likes, DMs, or stories. So your algorithm puts a lot of focus onto timeliness, so make sure you're consistently posting to stories to reach your viewers, and you could also schedule your stories with a later app. Hi, eTalkers. It's Cami back with Taylor, and we are here to discuss the latest TikTok drama. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's prepare ourselves. So I think it's the obvious one is the Addison and Bryce drama. Like, what is going on? Did he cheat? Did he not cheat? I, I personally think he did. And I think it's getting a little out of hand at this point. Radisson has gone through so <laughs> much over the past year. I honestly think of their relationship sort of as Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. Yeah. That's kind of what it is like because so many people are obsessed with them. Um, and they're both so young. Um, and Bryce, you know, really doesn't have a very good track record. He gets no. into a lot of trouble. And Addison is more known as like the good girl on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and he was in Vegas a couple weeks ago. And there are rumors that he did cheat on Addison with a girl named Savianka, who mm -hmm. is an upcoming influencer. Um, there were texts that came out about them um, saying that, you know, he had cheated on her. And then Addison was in Los Angeles. She was going to lunch, and the paparazzi made her cry. I see. Yeah, which I is saw so that. horrible. I know it is horrible. And the paparazzi. What I don't really get with them, though, with the paparazzi, is why they talk back and they have conversations with these paparazzi. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I, I, it's just that's crazy to me because I know all of the other celebrities. The paparazzi are horrible, right. but they're not going away. So why do you talk back and yeah, give them you, more information? You can go on YouTube and search worst paparazzi moments and so many different ones come up, but it's really disheartening, you know, when you yeah. see, you know, a grown man trying to, you know, continue to just mm -hmm. get information out of these kids. You yeah. know, that's so sad. And Charlie Puth even commented on the video saying like, you know what, you need to take a step back. Yeah. Is this really worth all the money doing this to someone, you know? making someone visibly upset. That's just, it's just so sad. It's so sad and it's just, it's horrible that like you're getting paid to be mean. Right. And I'm really not for it. No. But, and I just hope that like with the Bri with Bryce and Addison that, I don't, Bryce needs to grow up a little bit and I realize agree. what he has and he's, he's almost like, and I'm watching some of his videos and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, did you really cheat on your girlfriend? Mm -hmm. And I, I did hear like Snapchats are going around of him. Like he's Snapchatting other girls and like, it's not okay. I and think, yeah, I think Addison is just such a great girl and she is so mature for her age and her brand mm -hmm. is all positivity and everything. He's kind of the opposite of her totally. in a way. Yeah. Um, so maybe opposites attract, but at the same <laughs> time, you know, he's not the best role model while she really prides herself on being such a great role model for, you know, young kids around the world. They all look up to her. Yeah, they do. And I know a lot of people, people eat this up and they post it on TikTok like Trisha Paytas who, is crazy. Oh, I think crazy. I just sometimes sit in my bed and just laugh at her because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's Trisha Paytas. I don't know, but She's they're crazy. eating this up. They're taking this and they're like spinning it in all different ways. And I can't imagine what they are going through. That's so sad. But just hopefully everything ends well and Addison's okay and dealing with all of this well. Yeah, she put on something on her Instagram story saying you know, I really appreciate sharing my life with all of my fans and I feel so lucky to have this platform, but at the same time, you know, I like to keep certain things yeah. offline yeah. and a relationship is super personal. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, she said, you know, if I am ready to share and when I am ready to share, I will choose that decision and make that decision for myself. Yeah. You know, it's definitely so hard because she is so young. Um, you know, her career is still starting out and um, I think she's just going to get bigger and bigger. So yeah. she needs to, you know, have great people around her to she keep her does. grounded. I totally agree. Well, next up, we will be learning all about affordable skincare and makeup products. Stay tuned. 
Hey everyone, I'm Ariella and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite affordable, vegan, and cruelty-free products. So up first we have CoverGirl Mascara. It is an amazing mascara. It lasts for so long. It gives you so much volume. It's not tested on animals. It's vegan and it's a clean brand. I personally love CoverGirl. I'm currently wearing it on my eyes and I think you guys should all try it. Up next is my personal favorite. It's Thrive Cosmetics Eyeshadow Palette. I am obsessed with this eyeshadow palette. Being a vegan and cruelty-free brand, it is hard to find cosmetics and eyeshadows that don't come out clumpy and have great formula. This one is amazing. They also give a large percent of their profits to helping women who are veterans, are survivors of domestic abuse, suffering with homelessness or cancer. Last but not least is one of my favorites, concealers, and also works as a foundation. It is the Born This Way Too Faced. It is cruelty-free, vegan, an amazing, amazing coverage. I love it. I wear it every day. It covers pimples like vanished, gone. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, this is eTalk. To find out more about eTalk, visit elonstudenttv.org.